Here are five training tips to help you run faster at your next High Rocks race. With the eight kilometers plus of running representing over 50% of the High Rocks race, it can be the best place to focus and improve your overall High Rocks ranking and performance. Now, practicing what we preach is important and having applied these five techniques myself, I've managed to cut my one kilometer splits from an average of just over five minutes to just over four, shaving a total of eight minutes off my total High Rocks race time. Technique tip number one, it's time to get fast and furious and put a Usain lightning bolt in your stride with some fast pace sprinting at a distance between 400 to 800 meters. Why you may ask? Well, while high rocks is an endurance sport, it's important to develop the adaptations in our bodies to run fast. And this can be an area that is easily to overlook, but can pay dividends in your race. Sprinting fast is something that many of us as average athletes may not have done since school sports day many years ago, but developing those fast twitch muscle fibers through the short distances will make you a stronger and more rounded runner. It can be very easy in our mind to say it's 8K of running, which it is, but this is importantly split into one kilometer segments. So developing that ability to be more explosive in your running is important. Now, with pacing, consistency is king, quite literally, as if we look at the average one kilometer split running times for the elite 15 athletes in the sport, we see that relative to the rest of us, they will run a significantly more consistent time across each of their one kilometer segments. While each of us will need to establish a training pace that is right for us, and then measure and track in our training sessions to understand if we're getting more consistent in, for example, our first and last one kilometer in our one kilometer repeat training sessions. Then in terms of your next race, a quick and easy way to calculate your race pace to help you check if you're on target. If for example, the race floor layout at your venue requires you to do two laps for each one kilometer split, and if you're aiming for a four minute kilometer, then you know that you need to be completing one lap at roughly two minutes to maintain the pace consistently during your race. Technique tip number three is to integrate compromise running into your training. So whilst it can be helpful and advised to have specific separate strength and running training sessions, it's also important that we bring these two components together in our training and complete workouts that require running on pre-fatigue legs, as this will mimic the reality of what we'll face in our high rocks race. An example workout I like to train for this and you may want to give a go yourself is a 20 meter sled push into one kilometer run into 50 meters of weighted lunges, repeating that for three rounds. The one kilometer split after the sledge push is often the run that most athletes will find slower. And by repeating this workout, you'll see your ability to maintain a faster and more consistent pain even after the likes of the sled push improve, which will help you on the runs after each exercise station that is more leg dominant. Number four is to run long tempo and zone two runs at a slower pace. Here, we're really focused on duration and heart rate zone training. In terms of how long should these runs be, a useful gauge is anywhere between 70 to 120% of your total high rocks finishing time. The main thing here is that you're getting your body used to continuous non-stop cardiovascular exercise for a similar length of time than you'll, it will take you to complete high rocks. Distance wise on these runs, I might cover anywhere between nine to 12 kilometers, but I find it can be really helpful to not overly focus on the distance. Instead, running at a pace that is steady and slower than your race pace is what you are aiming for here to really build that aerobic base and capacity over time. In terms of zone two running, the benefits of this are widely published. In short, it'll help your body get more efficient at how it transfers oxygen around the body and clearing lactic, a byproduct of exercise in your body. If you have a fitness wearable, this should be able to guide you as to when you're running at a zone two pace. If you don't have one, a rule of thumb is if you're running at a pace where you can still maintain a conversation, it's likely that you're running in zone two, so hold that pace. Tip number five, running overpaced one kilometer splits. Whilst this may seem obvious, doing this on fresh legs at a pace that is going to be slightly above what you'll expect you'll do in the race, is gonna prepare your body and your mind to know what it feels like to run hard and achieve your desired pace. 
Doing this as a separate session without any strength and weight exercises means it's more likely you'll be able to put in your maximum effort into this. And when you do bring the running and strength work components together, you'll be well placed to hit those slightly slower one kilometer split times you've got in mind for race day. Now there are eight other exercise stations at High Rocks and for tips to go faster on those, check out these videos next.